Hello and welcome to the next episode of this disaster series, which is all about this Lego room and of course my life. But it's even more disastrous in this upload because we already have a special guest who is Mr. Jay's Toy Collection UK. Now, before he says a word, what this is all about is Star Wars and storage, which is his speciality. But before we get to that, we'll get to where we've got to. So in the last couple of uploads, we have done all these different bits and pieces. We have added in the Avengers Tower, which I think does look very, very good. And we have added in the Daily Bugle, and we will be talking about trying to make these spin at some point. The roller coaster's in, we have got those bits and pieces in, and then we've done all the bits and pieces on the Disney shelf as well. Now, we are in the process of ordering the base plates. We will be measuring them up behind the scenes, and they will be coming in sooner rather than later. Now, the wall to the back, which is all being painted, is in anticipation to the brand new Gotham set that will be arriving this Monday, but previous Mondays for you guys and girls. This has been filmed well in advance, because this is going to be a long project. So something is definitely going to go wrong in this one. So stick around to see what gets smashed. So like I said, this is all about Star Wars and storage starring Jay. So Jay, what is the plan for today? Well, so Matt has let me in the Lego room for the proper first time, and I must say, phenomenal in here some great lego sets and they look really good in person but there was one thing i noticed that was missing from the top of these tables and of course it's a galaxy far far away and it's going to have a very special place it's going to have the under the table fully lit display so as matt shows you here he's got an ikea Kallax in there but one one was not good enough for me i think we can go double deep and even form an L shape under the table. We can get some custom lighting in there and we can almost create a land the size of the marble land on the top of the table, recreate that L shape underneath. So it's gonna be a lot of work. because He's got a lot of stuff to move, hence Star Wars and storage. Mm, and there's gonna be some painting as well. So Matt will keep you entertained, I'm sure, for the next few hours of your life as we go to Star Wars and storage. That is incorrect indeed. So for the next hour or two for you, which is gonna be potentially, I've got, basically I've got three weeks. Until this video needs to be uploaded, I have got three weeks from today to complete this project. There's no pressure whatsoever, but first thing that you are gonna do is watch me make a mess of this in a time lapse because we need to figure out if we can get this Kallax, so this thing underneath here, underneath the shelf, which is where all the old VHS tapes are. So the first thing that we need to do is strip all of these off. Yes, I have only just put them on there, but that was just for space. So like all the other bits and pieces that you see, which is more permanent now, everything now is having its own zone, just like this mythical bits and pieces. So you've got all of this, and then obviously the paint is still being used for the Gotham wall in the background before that arrives. So fingers crossed in this upload, you will actually see that on the wall as well. So like I said, first thing first, time-lapse for you an emotional time for me. So the biggest thing has moved, and luckily only three pieces fell off. So we're not too bad so far, right? Three minutes into this, only three bits have come off. You can keep a tally of what is gonna break. Now, we have still got to clear the bottom shelves off, but I'm far too lazy, so I'm actually just gonna push it with those on because 80% of that is broken anyway. So the plan of attack for this is to see if this thing here will fit underneath or level with the old Thomas the Tank Engine VHSs. And if that then does work, all of that will come off, which is old bits and pieces on the shelf and then we can make more of a backdrop. But I need to get those off to then be able to paint the wall. This is the challenge that Jay sent me. He is there behind me, just watching ne and admiring. Nearly fell down the loft ladders and as well then, so yeah, nearly killed myself. Okay, see, I told you, I don't lie, that's how easy it is to forget that they're there. Now, so the other thing is with this, this also needs to come out for two reasons. One, I was stupid, so I put these in, and two, well, I'm stupid and I put those in so that's that's the thing with that but I do want to get another one of these and then potentially this on the side will come off now this is actually might be a dual overlap upload 
because the big man behind this has also come up with the idea for the mythical section, which is the upload that was before this one. So if you want to check out how that one finished, we were finished and stood by the Colosseum. Now, with regards to the Colosseum, we have got a little bit of space where that blue tower is behind this table. Now, all these tables had to get pulled forward in a couple of weeks ago's upload, which is today's upload. See, very, very weird with the timing. Um, and we have got more space to pull these forward. So potentially we could have the backdrop of the Roman Colosseum, which goes perfectly well with the Dungeons and Dragons film, which I did actually see for the first time last weekend. Very good film. I highly recommend it. And potentially then we could put some of the architecture sets there. Just a bit of a sort of a backdrop, almost like a Something that you see from a theme park, from an aerial view of a ride, but you can't quite be bothered to visit because it's too far away at the back end of the park. That kind of that kind of thing, especially for him because he wouldn't walk that far anyway. True. So we are going to, with Jay's help, push this back. I'll set you to another time lapse because there's going to be a bit of wiggling, I think, on this one. So we'll see what we can do with this and then um, we'll see how far we get. So you've seen a bit of a time lapse and Matthew is still down there making progress. He's managed to clear behind the Kallax and we have unearthed quite the large space. So if I rotate you around here, you will find him under there. And as you can see, he's managed to get right behind. So he has a shelf and I think with a little bit of wiggle room here, you're going to be able to fit this Kallax underneath that shelf. Therefore, a trip to Ikea at some point will be required because he's gonna to have to get another four by one Kallax to go in front. And we have then just doubled the Star Wars to Spay pace in literally the last half an hour. So progress, ladies and gentlemen, is being made. All right, stick around because I'm ready to push this. Right. Oh, hang on. Stick for your pushing. Yeah, so the moment of truth. Right, here How we go. How far are we gonna be off? Oh, we're gonna, this is gonna be good. I can see this if I come right down here. Oh, we're gonna be good. We are gonna be good. I'm anticipating good things. This could be one of the smoothest moves he's ever done. That's very famous last words, Joe. He says confidently. Confidently. He's, he's only that confident because you know you get to leave. <laughs> I've got to do this the next couple of weeks. I have to paint it, of course. You have to pull this back out, but uh, is it going to fit? Is Ooh. it actually going to go underneath that bit of wood? It's looking, oh, it's looking good. That is incredible. Oh, oh, a bit of luck here on this uh, Saturday morning as we film this video. I think we've, uh, look at this floor space we're making. That is naughty, what have we done here? He's down under there, deep in the heart of it all. We're under. We are under. That's it, it's flush. And that is fantastic. So what we've got to do is a quick little tape measure and can we fit that exact Kallax in front? Right, that is good news. As you can see, it actually fits. And with a little bit of wiggle room, we can get the next one in here. And you might be asking, why didn't I do this earlier? Now, if you remember this, I'm going to try it one more time, and if it buggers up again, we will just pretend it's in, and when we can just continue with life. Well. <laughs> <laughs> not that <gone> well. <laughs> it's hit the exact same car, but it's not any more damaged. But it has just broken the roller coaster track instead. <laughs> oh, I couldn't make it up if I tried. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, because of him, he knew exactly what I was going to insert on there. <laughs> Me falling through a table for the Ninjago is exactly where I'm kneeling now. Now, with that table break, yes, it's caused an absolute nightmare with regards to the God, like 10, 12, 15,000 pieces or something stupid that it was. But now it allows us a lot of these little bits of wiggle room to be able to do this kind of thing. So to get a second one of these in, not only do we have to go to Ikea, which potentially we could do on the way back from Birmingham on Monday, because we have got a trip planned on Monday. So not only do, just, just for the sake of getting another one of these in, this table, this table, that table, and that table all needs to move by three inches. And I have about three inches at the very, very end. So just for the sake of that, everything on top 
needs to move about. So what we are going to do now is we know this works and then we can't really do too much else until I clear the space behind. So pull all of this off. The shelf will decide what we're going to do there. If I replace it with some different bits of timber, I just need to measure the ceiling height of this. Yes, you can see all the old classic games that will be from being here from way back when. But the fact that that does look like it just gets launched straight in like that, we can have either a display directly on top and then it steps up and then obviously we lose we do lose a little bit of space on the top but it doesn't matter because you still got the full length of the cube i've got to take these two out but i need to paint the wall so what we're going to do right now is we're going to go on what is potentially the first of maybe two or three road trips in this upload to grab some paint now as we're driving around we'll be discussing colors and you guys and girls in the comment section can let me know if you think we did the correct Thing. Now, the reason why I wanted to get this done three weeks in advance is because the Gotham wall, which is this massive red wall behind us, which is currently missing the artwork, because like I said, if you want a timestamp today, we are the Saturday before Easter Monday when the new Gotham set gets released, and it is going to go up on that wall between the pegs, modelled by Jay over there. So that is going to be up more than likely within this upload, so I want to try and get that done and get that built in the same day. But... That paint took nearly two weeks to put on because it takes so long to dry. Now, as it is right now, it is roasting in here, which is the first time this year. If the temperature drops, it will then be minus temperatures. And you can see how damp it is up here because that is two tone of color. So I've got a very, very funny feeling. I'm gonna have to put an undercoat on first, which is gonna take forever to go off and it stinks as well. Right, as normal, a change of plan, but in a good way. So we are still going to get the paint, but I do want to get this moved underneath first. And this, I do believe, will have space to go in that storage cupboard. Can you remember the storage cupboard where I just put all the stuff in there? Yes, so I'm gonna to have to put all of that out to put that back in first, and then that'll give us some space for the Star Wars display. So to get everything moved, this is gonna to have to move, the stuff underneath is gonna to have to move, all of this is gonna to have to move underneath, and then we've got a trip to get the paint, then there'll be another trip to get all the uh, storage side of stuff with the Kallax units and things like that from Ikea. But first thing first, I need to get this table moved. I need to try and get those pins popped off without this time knocking the modular. then we interrupt your time lapse here for live action footage now you will see a man under a table there he comes he's just like a hobbit isn't he from lord of the rings crawling under rivendell so he's found this massive i don't know beak oak some sort of classic wood thing here that's going to go in the cupboard it's rather heavy and rather long and he's gone full he's gone full length in there so he's literally how is he getting out of that so <laughs> He's in the cubby hole under the crawl space of the loft. This unit must weigh a good 10 stone. It's absolutely ram packed full as he's trying to drag it under the table. But look at the space. Those are the least regular what will be to come. Star Wars space we are going to gain as he attempts to get this in here without breaking some more Lego, as you can see under there. Now he's literally disappeared. Now all can just see a hand. The hand has appeared out of the breach. There he is. He's coming up. It's going in. It's sliding straight in. No issues at all. It's uh, oh, oh, oh nice. Ironically, 
Ironically, he just got caught on the door handle. The handle he just put back on, in fact, because he did take it off earlier. But the, he's managed to make it in there. Here we are. We are here. Brick Life Travels in the Lego Loft. Live action footage, you can see, ladies and gentlemen. And there is Matt himself Hello. just appearing from the Hobbit Hole. He's like Bilbo Baggins. He's been on an adventure. He's had the time of his life here. He's going to cut a lovely piece to camera in a second. I, is it? Yeah, let as me go. Oh. As he comes out, there he is. Oh, God, I've just come out of a womb again. There he is. What are you trying to say, sir? That was splendid. Right, so <laughs> that was absolutely magnificent. Now, that is full length all the way in now I need to get light because we've got it goes to the back wall basically so ideally that now needs to be twizzled um Jay's just put his torch on very kindly for me so we've got to get it to that back wall how much space have I actually got so I think I can potentially I don't know so if I can spin that I might not be able to spin it but if I don't spin it it's not the end of the world as long as I can push it in so I'll give that back to Jay you're going to go on a ride because you're just going to go into the darkness so I've got no else to put you and I'm now just going to try and basically push you in the hole I've got nothing to push off wow. right you are moving you are still with me Jay's still got his light on which is doing absolutely nothing but he, he's there in spirit so that's that's what we care about. Now, the, I've, I know you guys and girls are thinking, well, why don't you just take all this stuff out? I'm too lazy. I'd rather struggle like this. He's like Frodo. He's got to Mordor. He's trying to get the one ring. I don't, inst I don't understand these references. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get filled in in the comment section. All right, so that is over. That is... You're still with me. You're still with me. Uh, right, so... Back into the light. Oh, it's quite on now. Right, that's the space. So we got a, another reason why I wanted to. I want to see how much I needed to paint. So that's going to be that's going to be painted. That brickwork is going to be painted. Underneath is going to be painted. As per normal, it's an absolute disaster. However, I guess if I can now just pull that calax forward, I can just paint here. Now there is a couple of bit more furniture to come in. I need to turn the camera off and up because I need two hands to sort that out a little bit more and then I've got to stack all the Lego boxes back in once a couple of bits and pieces have gone in there's some other bits and pieces I need to move in and then we'll give you a quick update if I'm still alive so a lot of weight he's been shifting there I must say <laughs> and then what we'll do is we'll head over to probably b and so it'll be less traffic and see we've discussed it we reckon like a a sandy tan Tatooine style yeah so that sort of we're looking for that kind of colour um, which would be interesting with some lights underneath so this is going to be a really nice project and obviously we got the right colour for Gotham I think, that, I think that comes out really nicely on the camera so at some point I'm going to show you that wall and like I said the other set will be there but enough of me waffling I'll carry on wiggling this around and then again I'll catch back up with you in a little bit As you can tell, we are on the move, and I am right beside a very sweaty Jay's Toy Collection UK. But Jay, I think that was quite successful, wouldn't you? I would say that was a very successful afternoon. We got a bit of a sweat on. This man has been crawling in cupboards, moving a ton of weight. But Star Wars display that we didn't even think we were doing at the start of this day no. is coming on very well. So, what is the plan then? What are you envisioning? Well, I'm envisioning now, now we've managed to get that IKEA Kallax unit under there, under that shelf, another one in front. So that's going to give you now effectively eight cubes of space. And under the table, you've cleared from the left what you're in the cupboard for. I think you're going to get another row of three and a row of three. So six more there as well. So six plus eight is going to give you 14 Kallax cubes worth of space. And it's going to be double layered. So you actually effectively get 28 Kallax cubes of space for Star Wars. That's not too bad. So are you thinking, and obviously what I'm trying to visualize as this goes through is, this is all in anticipation for a walkthrough museum. So we are looking at the different Falcon, the new one that's just come out. And then we're thinking, maybe do we merge it with the Indiana Jones stuff? Do we turn this into like our Lucas Lounge type thing? Um, what do you think? Which what, what do we put where? I, I think potentially we do merge it. So we do similar to what I've done in my own display there. I've mixed the Indiana Jones and the Star Wars to do a full sort of 
Lucas Lounge, as you would call it there. A lot of the tan colored bricks you're saying from Tatooine and from the George Lucas items as well from Indiana Jones. So I think those will go well together. I like your idea of like a Star Wars walkthrough museum. So the smaller ships and maybe now the diorama pieces. So maybe the Battle of Endor with the speeder bikes, you already have the, uh, the hut from Dagobah where um, Yoda lives, so that would have... Uh, oh, the pizza uh, hut. Yeah, the pizza hut, as you call it. That would go well. I think you're going to have to then get some sort of like Lego crowd barriers almost, so you can uh, section off that section, do not touch kind of thing, so people can walk by, so you can really sell it. It's like a museum. Yeah, and then nice. maybe at the back of the display is where you get your sort of place gets sort of scale vehicles. You've got the Ghost, and then you've got the T6 in there. You've got an X-Wing as well to, to still build. They can go at the back, and then you sort of sell the scale as you go through the display, I would think. So with regards to color of base plates, because it's gonna be a little bit tricky, are we gonna, obviously with the Tatooine sand backdrop, which is gonna look nice when it's all lit and everything else, for the main display, which is not gonna be in the Kallax cubes, and we sort of create this walkthrough museum aspect on that level, are we going gray base plate, and then where we've got more of the diorama -y pieces, or like some of the ships, will we just have different color base plates underneath? that or we're just going to mix and match and make it up as we go that's what i would do i would do a potentially like a gray for the walkthrough path but then as you come into each section of each part of the display so the cantina for instance would need a tan base plate but then if you have the endor stuff or the dagobah stuff you need green yeah so each section has its own sort of mini plates underneath representing the color of the display on top is I think how I would I would lay it out. So with regards to the UCS gunship, would you like to let them know your idea with that? Well, we have been down into the famous sort of potential shed display area, which of course had the famous leaking roof. So go back to some of these previous disaster videos and you will see this man on top of a roof refelting. It was all going on up there. It was absolutely filthy. Yeah. But he has a he has cured his leak. His leak has stopped. The water is no longer pouring through the shed. So therefore that area is now coming back into play. So the idea we were discussing is potentially for a live stream setup as Michael Matt does his Thursday live streams and he will also be joining me every two weeks this week in toys on my YouTube channel you've seen him there talking all things six inch as well as Lego so if you haven't subscribed make sure you do that ladies and gentlemen it's called a cheap plug for myself on the road but as we are in that area maybe he could live stream from the shed so he's going to need a nice big bold sort of Lego display behind him that you can see on camera so I was thinking the UCS gunship would make a nice backdrop uh, I think you've got like the UCS scale tumbler yep. maybe the Batmobile as well so big sets sort of behind you there yeah I think that I think that look really I think that look really nice so the gunship is not going to be stripped apart so that has been moved and that will be it'll re be relocated in a different upload so it might just be dumped on one of the tables for now and there is also as we we're saying a different idea with the Coliseum as well so basically that mythical land, because the video that was before this one was just making sure that we could space everything. And that one did end on a bit of a cliffhanger with regards to um, the actual Coliseum itself and seeing we can make it work. There are ideas in play, but to be able to do that, it does mean we're gonna have to move one of the tables like we've already covered. So the sort of mythical section is gonna be a long burn because the sets that are needed so far, and if you wanna get your calculators out, you can do, we have got a loop roller coaster. We need the Gringotts Bank. We need the Dungeons and Dragons set. We need the new big castle and we need the village, well, the castle market as well. So that's at least five sets off the top of my head that I can think of. And that's before it gets base plated. That's before the tiles arrive and we add any other minifigures. Is there anything else you can add to that display that I've forgotten about? Yes, you've forgotten all the Jurassic Park sets potentially yes, attached indeed. to the side and from the He-Man Mega range, the Snake Mountain as well will be a set that you'll need to pick up that for the is very background true. there. Well, would you like to let them in on a little secret? We may have, we may have had a little bit of a bargain. If you were watching, as I said, this week in toys, you will know that we were talking about He-Man and the new Origins car Toon line and in that discussion we were talking about Snake Mountain 
and we had a little look on Amazon and found a warehouse deal for an incredible £106 for 4,000 pieces, so two pence per brick. So it may have been purchased to start off this sort of Lego Saturday, this construction Saturday, if you will, and uh, that may be coming sooner rather than later then. Right then, we're just leaving B&Q now, and as you can see, we've gone for some very fancy paint. Hokkaido pink we've gone for, because we actually watched Star Wars in a B&Q store. Yes, you heard me right, I went on YouTube, we watched a bit of Star Wars, the two suns of Tatooine, the two moons as the, uh, as the sun is setting, and you see this kind of mauve-coloured sky as we go round a roundabout as I try and film this very informative segment of the video. And this is also a glitter paint but we have discovered at the till that you have to add the glitter yourself. So you'll see Matt in a future video adding glitter to his paint. That, of course, is gonna go extremely well. And uh, even more, he's even purchased some boarding for the shed area. So all sorts of things happening in this video, as we know, why, goodness me, well, this is, what a segment this is, as he accelerates as we head towards the motorway. But for the rest of the video, this is Jay's Toy Collection signing off. Yeah, Matthew will catch up with you at some point in the future part of his life. Today is a new day. The whirlwind of yesterday has finished and we're at where we're at. So this is the paint in question that is going to be going on. Now that is hopefully, if you didn't see it before, that is what that looks like. It does look nice. And yes, there is a glitter effect. No, I had no idea when I bought it. I actually have to add my own glitter. Which I'm really confused with that. So I don't know where the glitter is actually stuck. So I will be checking that with you in a second. Now, all I need to do with regards to prep for this is just re-pull out that cabinet. So we'll go for a quick crawl underneath the table because we have all of this space. So obviously that was misery, but they are all in. I've got some more space here and obviously there is more space down that side as well. But all of this here is gonna be painted in that color. And then we have this front wall as well that we are gonna do. And then we have all of this brickwork as well. So it's actually quite a big area because it is, well, it's all the way down there and obviously that is brick from the bottom to the top so this is going to take a little while so me and pumpkin are making some sort of progress now i have got a decision to make because i don't know whether to keep the shelf in so once all these bits and pieces are off, um, ow, I will push, I keep headbutting these bits of chunk underneath. Um, I'll push that back under, and if I, keep, if I keep it, we have an extra height. So it might look quite nice, but obviously didn't think of what color to paint this. So I'm gonna have to prime this or prep it and everything else. And of course, it's orange. So it's all horrible and it needs to be cleaned. So this is nice and comfy. So why I try and remove myself from this gap, I have moved all the bits and pieces you've just seen in that time lapse, and I have just cleaned off very, very quickly. I just had some dental spray around actually. You could just use a damp cloth. Just got some of the brick dust off. So I'll grab another rag to dry that off with because I put it on very, very lightly. It's not, it's, it's ready. It will be ready for paint sooner rather than later. Hopefully that's not going to take too long, too long, too dry. So I've got to start down at that bottom corner and then work my way round. And then, like I said, I've got to think of what I'm going to do with this shelf. I think I'll keep it in for now because I'll add a tier in. And then if it looks silly because it's not been painted, and then obviously going to have to paint that probably a completely different colour anyway. But once everything else is done to paint this shelf, it's not going to take too long. It's just a case of pulling the ca these two calaxes back out when they're in. <sighs> to actually paint it, it's not too bad. To get there to paint it will be a big, a big ask. Um, so potentially we might just be able to do the front just here 
and then just put base plate the top. That's probably that's probably the easiest the easiest way of doing it. So I'll be able to reach then just with this small paintbrush and just paint a strip in front of it, and then you won't, you won't see underneath it, and then you won't see on top of it because I think we'll have the sets and base plates on there. That's the plan anyway. So I need to get myself out, grab a towel, dry this off, then I'll show you the paint to try and mix this glitter, and then we can start painting. Right, this is the first time of me actually seeing the colour. The geese are opened it up in the shop. I don't know how he opened it up without breaking the seal off, but we have, so. What is that? Oh no. Ah. Uh. So I've got to crack that off, mix that in. I have to mix it well, but pour the whole sheet in, mix it well, because if I ever need to use it again, otherwise I could just put a load in on a small bit and made it all metal flaky. I just have that upside down. Should I just be stupid? I don't just be stupid. I don't just put it upside down on the lid. Probably be a good idea to have something to pour it in and a roller first. That might be a good idea. I'm getting a little bit carried away with that. So I will get this poured, get this mixed. We'll get it on the wall. You will be enjoying that as that goes on. And yes, I am wearing my airy trousers again. It's like I did warn you in the last one. They are netted. I've got shorts on and everything else on underneath. But these are ripped, as you can see, front to back. So this might be the last outing, last outing of these. But why wear anything nice when you're doing scruffy work? So. With that disclaimer in place, let's get this mixed, let's get it on the wall, and let's see what this is gonna turn out like. So just put a new roller on the sleeve and crack the seal. Let's see what this actually looks like. Ooh. That is the proper, that is almost the color, as close to the color as you can get from that very, very famous scene of Luke coming out the hut with that sunset in the background. So there is potential that we could do some bits and pieces with it. Now, that does look a little bit watery to me. Hmm. How wet is it? Very. Oh, fantastic. So when I pour this, this is gonna be an absolute pain. Um, I am gonna go for a pour and shake. I'm gonna pour the glitter in, put the lid on, and shake it for dear life. I think that's the only way. I don't think a stir is gonna work enough. I don't think you're going to get any an equal distribution. I'm assuming the reason why this is here is for you to do that. I don't know what purpose this serves because it's a very, very deep thing just for glitter. So I'm assuming you're supposed to be... <laughs> There's actually no instructions, so... It just it does say perfect conditions to paint, which we're miles off, um, and then it's a second coat after four hours, which it's not going to be. So, yeah, we will see. But that does look very, very, very watery, which is no good for me whatsoever. So hopefully it's just all the oil and the water and stuff at the top. So I need to get that glitter, pour it in this face. Can't remember where I put the glitter. There it is. Let's get this in. Should I just be silly? Let's be silly. Let's plump you there. On the worst place to put you. And then yeah, do a bit of arts and crafts. Now can I rip this? Pull it? If I pull this and it pops open, I will not be happy. Yeah. Skizzers. But we're just going to give it the beans. Oh, that's a lot of glitter in there. Oh, look at it go everywhere. No, don't do that. Ooh, shiny. And so we're hoping when it's all lit up, this will give a nice effect. So in case you can't see that properly, that is what that looks like. And I already know 
that if I start to shake this, how much of this is going to get stuck to the lid. Right, I definitely need two hands. Let's put you, let's put you down. So if I, if, I, if I use a stick, it's all going to get stuck to the stick. So I'd rather it get stuck to the lid. But it's getting, definitely getting stuck to my fingers. Look at the amount that's there. It's ripping the wall, not in me. Right. Um, that can be propped up there. It's going to look like Christmas in here for a while. Let's get that a little bit flatter. Oh, shit, I don't know if I can put that on. I think that's going to touch the. That's going to, the glitter's going to get stuck to the bottom of that, isn't it? So that's not going to work, right? Oh, here we go. Oh, well, moment of truth. Fantastic. I would say that's in there somewhere. Where it's in, I couldn't tell you. But apparently it's in there. So I'll give it another shake. You go to a time lapse. And then we will go from there. I bet some of it is stuck on the lid, but I can scrape that off and then just put it back in again with the brush. So as long as this does not come off, we should be. Good to go. Perfect stuff. Right, time lapse for you. Paint on the wall for me. And then we'll see what this looks like when it goes on the brick. And then see what it looks like when it dries. Right, so that is the colour. Now, all the white bits on the wall are not stupid. The wall's just that unlevel. I'm now going to have to go back over with a paintbrush. So all that top run underneath the table, the bricks are actually set quite far back. And then all the other little gaps and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, I will just jab and dab those in while I mask up at the top once I put the second coat on. But you can actually see there is quite a lot of glitter on eye. With this i don't know if it's coming through on the camera until i watch it back but there is a fair fair bit in there so it's going to hopefully give some sort of effect i can see it's sparkling just up at the up at the top so yeah fingers crossed fingers crossed it'll be okay it's definitely going to need a second coat so i'm um, it's that cold up here i'll just put this in a carrier bag and then it'll be job will be good and i will probably grab a paintbrush now and dab in the brickwork so it will dry together and then everything can just have its second coat at the exact same time and then i'll either catch back up with you later on today or potentially a trip to ikea right i've actually now just dabbed everything on with the paintbrush and it is drying nicely fingers crossed now what i need to do is clear this space just here so all of this is casting a shadow over there so that way i can actually see what's drying what's not and then i can actually do it properly basically it's so obviously the first coat we know you bodge second coat you try and put on properly now this should only take there or thereabouts 20 minutes now there is a small issue which jay's toy collection uk is 100 percent responsible for because i have a very very funny feeling even though it was yesterday and it does feel a long time ago and it was a whirlwind 
there was a certain individual that was in charge of putting all the boxes back in the cubby hole. And somehow there's a Ninjago box on the floor just here with the broken Razor Quest on. And now I'm sure he was sat just there and that box would have been beside him. So as a project manager, Jay, you've you've done me over because I've now got <laughs> I've now got to get some of that back out again to put it back in. But in all fairness, it'll take like 10 seconds. So it'll be it'll be fine. Get that in, get that table over. Uh, videos and DVDs, I'm gonna keep them out for now for a project that might be going on behind there and they might come in handy as a riser. So they're gonna stay on the floor for now and then they'll be sort of moved around and moved around. Worst case, they will just live basically underneath, underneath this table. So you're gonna go to a time-lapse. We'll get all of this back in. So we're now putting everything back that we moved. Um, Got to keep the technics set out. I've got bits and pieces that I basically need to make sure that stay out. And then I've got bits and pieces on here that I can just quickly tidy. And then that is full of pieces and minifigures which can go into a Kallax cube. Um, and that's something else that I will be building up within this upload. I've got a single individual cube. So I want to get that in and get that measured and just make sure that's done before I go to IKEA. Um, so I can retake the tape measure off. So I can actually just prop that against the wall. So that'd be happening probably today to be fair it's gonna be like I said it's gonna be a very 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 long day so time lapse for you move all this for me and then we'll see what it looks like So as you've just seen, the table's moved, I can stand. I sort the floor out, all those instruction booklets were in another box, that box split, same old story. But check this out. So light is on, and hopefully that is shining through on the camera. So I'm just gonna do this as a test, but that whole wall is full. So I did that. Hopefully, that has picked it up nicely. Now it's still coming through the camera a little bit darker than what it is in person, but you can see that's definitely gonna need another another coat. So I can't see it sparkling through the lens, but I hope I can see it by eye. So good bit on that wall. This back wall across the top has a lot. So yeah, we'll see what color that actually dries. Obviously that is still soaking wet. And then I will just be dabbing. Like I said, the front of this, I will I will paint up. But again, with the ice white, I don't know how this camera actually reacts to it anyway. So, while that's drying, I've got loads of other bits and pieces to do, which actually is in a completely different area on a simultaneous upload to this. Or, I say simultaneous. I'm filming it simultaneously, but it'll be the following week or the week before, depending on which project gets done first. So, I'm going to leave it up here. And I'll catch back up with you when I bring the cube back up. But obviously for me to build the single cube, I'll have to probably, well, I will definitely have to tidy up this floor first. And then once that's done, we'll see if the paint's dry and I'll try and get a second coat on, which then means, fingers crossed, we will just be good to go to Ikea eventually to get these other units to put them in, project done. Sounds a lot more simple than what it probably is, but at the same time, we now have a serious amount of space. Right, we are still the same day. The first coat is dried, and there is some nice glitter effect on that. I think that is now starting to come through on the camera because I've just had a look on my phone. Now, I've got a bad feeling because it's still so dark, it's a little bit lighter than what it is showing on the GoPro. Here, not so much. It is a really, really nice color. So I now need to get the second coat on. I'm not gonna bore you with and then I'll catch back up with you once the second coat's gone on, or if it's time 
for the Kallax. So today is a new day and look what has arrived. That thing is a thing of beauty. Now I have just finished a unboxing video for it, hence why everything is a complete disaster. But what we need to achieve by the end of today, and um, which is going to wrap up this video, is I need to sort out this Kallax. I need to take out the inner bits on the sides. I need a little bit more space and I need to make the other cube. And then I need to get all of this stuff back off this table because I was actually doing a Lord of the Rings slash Dungeons and Dragons upload, which should have gone live before this one. And I've tripped over myself by putting all of this on that table and I can't finish that video. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to get the storage underneath. There'll be no trip to Ikea. I've run out of time for that. I have got no time now until I get back in the country to be able to go to Ikea and do different bits and pieces like that. So we have got a lot to do, a lot to sort out, a lot to put back and a lot to tidy up. And I've got to move this safely first. But before I move that, I've got to get all of these lights and everything out of the way. And then, like I said, all of those bits and pieces will get ripped off. All the paint stuff will come down. I've got to, re I've got to take this Kallax apart, which is really annoying, um, just to take the inner bits out, make up the other cube. That will then give us all the space we need for that table. Job is a good one, he says. So time lapse for you, lots to do for me, and then... Hopefully that'll be the end of this. We can see exactly where we were going for future uploads with the Star Wars stuff. And then I can carry on with the other million and one things that I need to do. Right, it's been pulled out again. It's like deja vu all over again. Now, there's actually another reason why I've just remembered that this video is leapfrogging the um, Dungeons and Dragons video. It's because every single one of these tables needs to be pulled down again that way, which um, is a this video problem, not a Dungeons and Dragons video problem, but I have to do it first. It's very confusing. The reason is, is we want two of these in front of each other, which I think we've already said. Now, we have got tiny tiny gap and there is a tiny tiny gap just down there so i will once these tables have been cleared pull them over measure it up to make sure it fits before i go off and get another one of these however i have just brought up this this is a single cube calyx yes that is the old playstation one game ready for jay's toy collection to play this weekend coming I am going to build this one up, get the tape measure in again, just to make sure that our maths are correct, because it's always a little bit awkward with these chunky pieces, because it always adds on a little bit. But as I probably would have said at the start of this video, as a recap, we want another single. So there's a single, I need to get another single, and then two twos to go underneath here. And then I need another one of these to go in front of this, just to give us that nice depth. But what I need to do now, because I'm a moron, so you're about to go straight into another time lapse, is I need to take this piece out and this piece out. Because I did not think it through when I did it the first time, so I need the shelf space. So when that's done, I've got the tools ready, I've got the screwdrivers, and I have got a set of Allen keys and all that kind of nonsense with me. That one goes in, so it'll be a time lapse job again. That one goes in. I've just got to be so, so careful. Obviously, I've moved this. This is now over here. Um, this again, oh, I mean, look at that against the red. That is so, so nice. Yeah, that's going to pop amazingly on the camera. And that is the plan of attack for that is to go a little bit higher up. Now, that is obviously going to be done in its own upload. There will be a... I'm hopefully won't drop that upload on there. I have measured it. I've measured the width. So that is, the width of that is between the two pegs. I know this is nothing to do with Star Wars or storage, but tough, we're going with it anyway. But the screw holes for that are really close into the middle. So I am hoping I can just use the line of the screws that are already up, measure it across and mark it, and then just drill it in. But I obviously have to go into the brick. I can't go into the, into the join bit itself. I don't want to risk going up any higher 
because it is actually only 16 inches, not 17, which was a massive mix up, I think, on the website. It gave the centimeters and inches in each other's thing. So it was either one or the other, but the box artwork has confirmed it's 16. I will get a tape measure on it beforehand, but I think if we can have it as it is, we'll be able to put that run of minifigures on the modulars and then it'll be part of it. So I think that would look quite nice, but I'm saying that now because this is gonna go live, this sec segment and this whole video is going live tomorrow and I'm not gonna be starting that until possibly later on next week at the earliest. So with that being said, time-lapse now, get this Star Wars stuff. I am just gonna smash this one out, get this done, get that one built as well, get them underneath, show you what it looks like, measure it up with the tape measure to make sure they fit. Then we can get all the Star Wars stuff back on these calaxes to clear this table, to clear this table, and then that should be as done and finished. And then at some point when I get back from Singapore, we will be able to go and to the IKEA trip and then carry on with the Star Wars display. And I haven't forgotten, once this is in and this is in, at the same time of building the other Kallax cubes, I will paint the shelf as well, because I just need to think what color to do it. And if I do paint the whole shelf, obviously, I will probably um, prime it first, or just put a white undercoat on. But that shelf where we've got the yellow, the top of that shelf isn't painted. So I got away with that. Honestly, it's all gonna be base plate. So depending on what we do with that, I will paint it, but I just don't know what color to go with. I don't know whether just to paint it white so it matches the Kallax or paint it the um, nice new color so it matches the wall. So again, you guys and girls can let me know in this upload what you think, and then I can get it done in a couple of weeks time, like I said, when I'm back. So with that being said, time to strip this one apart and get this one built. Right, that took a lot longer than it needed to, but it's done. So slide and glide, in it goes. Now this is actually moving and obviously this will end up going. So there'll be nothing underneath here by the time the actual Star Wars project starts when all the other Kallaxes and things turn up. In the process of putting technically a third video together actually at the same time, trying to get them all together before I actually go away to Singapore. So you guys and girls will have something to watch um, for a brand new unboxing area slash more of a live stream studio, I think, to be honest. And this this will be used down there. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for that because the paint has already gone on the walls for that one. But I don't know when that video is going to be uploaded because there's still a lot of work to do. But talking of work, let's carry on with this. If I just plonk you there, this is going to go in sideways, isn't it? So we will lose a cube. This will go to the wall like so. 
Now, if I grab a tape measure, if I measure this, this is 15 and a half inches or 39 centimeters. And if I slide that all the way further back, we can get another one directly behind it. So we just go to the 40 on the tape measure. So there to there is 40, nice and simple. Get the 40 on the tape measure, which I can see, which you can't. And we have a teeny tiny bit at the back. So we can fit this double deep. And the plan is we fit this double deep as well. So that then is where we start to wiggle bits and pieces. Now this is gonna take a bit of persuasion because of course the floor and things are not level. So basically that can come to there. That will go to there. I'd have to then raise this one up ever so slightly with a little bit of cardboard because that is how wonky the floor is. Though it's not my wonky building, it's just the wonky floor. And then I can try and put something in this corner just to give us a little bit more space. And then, like I said, we need to go double deep on this one. Now, I think these are the same depth, so I'll just double check these for whatever reason. We're looking for 40. Oh, 39 centimeters, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just under 16 actually. So I've been lying to you, 39, but I'll go for 40 to be safe. And there is 40 on the inside, 39 on the inside of that leg. You can't even see what I'm doing, there we go. So that is 39, 39, 40. So I need to move every single one of these tables by about that much to get the next one of those in. And I wanna do that now before I start putting all of the bits and pieces back on there because it would just be stupid. But to do that, I might as well put the Star Wars stuff back on here first. So that is how this is gonna look, but it's gonna be double depth. Um, yeah, I think that's gonna work really nicely. And of course, that's what I've just been messing around with with regards to having more, more space, more display space underneath there rather than having the three in, I've just gone for the two. So because this is a four cube, I guess that's the easiest way to go from. So it'll be from there to there on. So that is to the inside of this wooden leg. Would have a single cube behind the single, then it'd be a double and a double. So it'd be nice amount of display on the top, nice amount of display on the top. And then like I said, we can just mess around and paint that shelf. And there are some bits and pieces on there for now. So I will put you to another time-lapse because it takes a long, long time, so I will get all of these off. Obviously, this actually has a new home as well. But for now, I will actually have to stay here. So I think what I will do, just for safety, is I'll pull this forward so I can actually fit the wings and everything on, and it will rest underneath this table. Because like I said, this is going to be an ongoing project like everything else. I just want to get everything in the correct place. So we have got to relocate all the Indiana Jones stuff. The Star Wars stuff, all the Star Wars boxes and things like that. And obviously, I know, I know it's all got to come back out again to then be put back in properly. But that is a different problem for a different Star Wars upload. Whereas this is just focusing on with the storage work. Yes, it will. We've done a lot. It look, The paint looks nice. It's obviously all got to get lit. It'll be lit before the units. I buy any more Star Wars bits and pieces. Otherwise, it wouldn't make any sense with it. So I've got to get all that lit underneath there and all that kind of fancy thing. So another time lapse for you, you're gonna see my head going up and down. I might set you over maybe from the Batman side. Um, I'll figure that out as we go. And then hopefully, cantina, all that kind of stuff is tidy. Quick catch up with what's next, done. You can see what we're trying to achieve and it's done for now. All the bits and pieces just dumped in there. There's actually quite a lot of space just on this one Calax. Now these things have been taken out, let alone the stuff that is behind on that shelf. And then obviously we've got the little BB cube just in there. So when the others arrive, this is gonna be one serious Star Wars display. Now, the ships that are underneath there, they could be theming for other bits and pieces. There will be a Marvel video and all that kind of thing appearing before we actually probably get round to doing this actual project. 
but I have started to add things in like that. Now, I really do like that. There is a video of this as a test of a speed build that I've done that is going to be uploaded at some point. The lighting was dreadful on it, but I just wanted to see what a speed build would look like and how that worked on the channel. But you can see, I think... I think all of that rubbish was in the middle anyway. We're back to where it needed to be for me to carry on with the Dungeons and Dragons, sort of like making space for the set. Um, obviously, as and when and if I pick that one up. And then obviously, with regards to what we're going to do if, as and when we get the Castle Greyskull as well. And I say if they have both been ordered. So with that being said... I'll leave you to that and let you look forward to the next upload that is going to be coming. So that is that for the mythical section. They are done. The Star Wars stuff is in for now. That was just that's just going to be left. That is going to be an ongoing project. What I am now going to do because I'm running out of battery very very quickly is I am just going to give this a little bit of a tidy off camera and then just carry on with what I should be doing before I can edit all of this. So in the comment section, let me know what section of this room for the theme park you think is gonna look the nicest when it's finished. We've also got downtown Gotham. There is another table store to come on that. There will be the repairs of all the Ninjago to happen after what happened happened. And then obviously all of this, when the base plates and everything go down, I think that'll look absolutely outstanding. That'll be actually, this will come together very quickly once the base plates and the tiles and everything go down. But again, I don't think they're going to arrive before I go away. So there's going to be a lot of stuff to do when I get back. So you've got a lot of exciting Saturday night uploads with all of the different Legoland parks around the world that will be coming very, very shortly. Now, a sneak peek of what is to come is this. So minus me that I've just knocked this beautiful tree. So you see, just knock that over. So we'll pop that back in on the pin. We have got a lot of ideas to come for this. Now, because the video is in the wrong order, we have got a lot to do with it. And I want to make this look absolutely spectacular with all different coloured lava, water and that kind of thing. Let me know in the comment section what sets you think I need for this mythical section. We can get them in early because, like I said, this is going up live tomorrow. And then I'll carry on filming this later on today and tomorrow as well. But with that being said, I think we have achieved as much as we can for the Star Wars and storage section. Can't get to Ikea, which is a shame. I just don't have, physically don't have the time to do it. But we're in a good place. And to be fair, they'll just stay empty anyway. And they'd have to be pulled out before it gets lit. So potentially it might be worth lighting it simultaneously or doing the lights before the Ikea trip or whatever. But that is going to be one Upload so Star Wars display lighting and storage is all to come in a separate thing but So I'm gonna cut myself off just there because I have done A thing God, how, how did I just catch that so um while this video that you've been watching was actually uploading to YouTube I Did this and because it's now quite late on Friday I think I have the time to get this uploaded and ready for Saturday. So this video has now been pushed back a week. So this is what it looks like on the wall. And I think it does look very, very good indeed with all the different modules and everything in front of it. Now, if you want to see how I managed to get that up on the wall, head over to last week's video because that is what that one will be all about. But it's still the same day. I have just changed my hoodie from the white one that I was wearing when I was about to do the outro to this is just many, many hours later. So with that being said, if you can like this video and subscribe to the channel, that'd be absolutely fantastic. But as always, thank you very much for watching. You lot take care and I'll see you next one. Ta-da.